Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to Trains Explained. In this episode, we'll be talking about wheels and how they are arranged. This is a locomotive. This is actually a London Southwestern Railway 442T Adams Radio Tank Class 415. Yeah, I know it's a catchy name, but hear me out. For the purposes of this video and many others, I'll be using my models that I've made for Transport Fever 2 in the Transport Fever Model Viewer. It just gives me a little bit more freedom. Um, if you don't like it, that's the way these videos are. I'm probably going to spice in some footage like this of the engine. That's real. Don't know if I'll credit it or not, I'll just find it online. But it's fair use, baby. Anyway, I I'm here to just explain trains and I hope people don't have a problem with that. I, I, I can't go out and grab my own sources, so the best I can do is a crude 3D model, which by the way has wheels. Small ones at the front, big ones in the middle, small ones at the back. This is how trains do. And why? Why do they look this way? It's a question that no one has ever asked and I will answer it. So we need to go back, back in time to 1820, 100, no, 200 years ago from today. At this time, you had engines that looked like this. This is Puffing Billy, actually from 1813, but I wanted to do the 100 years thing and I made it, I actually did it wrong, but here we go, this is Puffing Billy. This is a 040 engine, as you can see there's zero, 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 zero front wheels, four middle wheels, and zero rear wheels. Whichever end actually is the front, it doesn't particularly matter. They aren't coupled together with coupling bolts by the way, there's some coggly doodads underneath, but um, same principle. However, back then it wouldn't have been called a 040 because they had no concept of leading or trailing wheels, so it probably would have just been called a 4. Leading or trailing wheels. You had no need for it. Why would you have any wheels on the track that weren't powered? You might as well power everything you could. The tender at this point was just another coal wagon that they just put coal in the engine from. Until we get to 1829 and the Rainhill Trials, where some of the first engines with trailing wheels or leading wheels my cat's just had a fight. Are you okay? Where were we? Rainhill Trials, 1829. Rocket. Yes, Robert Stevenson's rocket. It's not George's. He had some to do with it, but it was mostly Robert that designed it. Actually, um, some guy called Booth designed the boiler, but that's a whole other video. Actually, you need to watch this one by Anthony Dawson. He explains it a lot better than me, and he's also like a, an author and qualified. And I'm just chatting to a microphone. This is not even scripted. But wheels, yes. So the rocket, zero at the front, two in the middle, well they're not in the middle, zero at the front, two driving wheels are actually the front, and two at the back. Yeah. So these are the, probably the first instances, apart from novelty, where the wheels aren't powered. And this gives the engine some stability when, when try, you, you know, you, yeah, it's hard to explain. Let's try that again. <laughs> The front wheels are powered by the cylinders, and there is not a connecting rod going back. The rear wheels are simply there to hold up the locomotive. All the weight of the engine is put on those front two wheels, providing as much tractive effort as it possibly could for as little lubrication as it possibly could, providing, well, it's a winning engine, so they obviously worked. Here's how not to do it. This is novelty. This was a, well, this is a whole other video on why novelty failed, but this is also a 022. Leading wheels and the trailing wheels are the same size. Uh, and there isn't much weight distribution, so it wouldn't have had a whole lot of tractive effort, and it's kind of pants. But it did do well, it went speedy, and it did it did have a life of hauling various freight, and at one point it had a third cylinder put in. Likewise, go watch this Anthony Dawson video, he's much better than me. So, let's advance with the years. So we go from rocket, to planet. As you can see, the wheels are just swapped around, the front ones are guiding it around corners a little bit now, you've got the big wheels at the back. Then you've got patentee. This has the exact same wheel arrangement, just with two more at the back, giving it a bit more stability. And as we advance on, we get to the engine we're looking at here. The Adams Radial Tank London Southwestern Railway 442T Class 415. This engine is kind of special in the fact that it uses radial technology, but I'm not going to do that in this video, that's probably a whole other thing, or just watch this Chris Eden Green video over here. Anyway, so we've got here four front wheels that guide the engine around corners. Four driving wheels, giving the tractive power to the train, giving the initial torque to move the coaches off and keep them going. I have rear wheels, keeping the bunker in check. Uh, these are pivoted, these are the radial wheels by the way, they do some fancy turning which make the engine not bend. And we've also got the, the uh, wait no that was all the wheels, 